there she is again. So incredibly powerful. And also, there goes the Nameless Isle. If you're curious... <laughs> Charming melody. If you're curious what happens if you ally with Alexander, actually, because um, I tried that before, um, you can do that. You can even get him to let you ascend. Um, but yeah, you just get killed by... Um, just get killed by Dallas. So, yeah, it doesn't change too much. Oh. I guess when I said never again, I really meant once or twice more. <laughs> Look at you, Melody. Just transporting a whole ship into the Hall of Echoes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The Hall of Echoes once more. Our home away from home. Yeah, very charming. Thank you for getting us off to the Nameless Isle. That was a close one. Close indeed. You almost became a god, and instead you're still... you. Hey. At least you managed to murder one of the seven. Quite the spectacle. One? I thought at least like four. I've never seen anything so... <clears throat> Let's talk about this later. I need to rest. We've still one big jump to go, but it'll have to wait. And then we're going to go to Arx, I guess. She casts her gaze around, taking in the streaming bluish ether. She breathes a deep, ragged breath. At least it's quite, quite beautiful here, isn't it? I'm going to take a rest, sort myself out. I suggest you do the same. Speak to the ship if you need me. She'll know where to find me. This may be your last bit of respite before the storm blows in again, Godwoken. Enjoy it. You deserve that much. One final moment of calmness before we're going to reclaim divinity and source. Wait, I can't talk to Ifan? Can I talk to everyone besides Ifan? No! Is that a bug? Attack, examine. Beast, feign, loser. Ah. Really, Elmira? Who are we also missing? Um, beast, feign, loser. This is also half standing inside him. I want to talk to you, farm. Oh well. I think Ifan has barked. So let's just see if we After can. After all that's just happened, uh, life, every flawed morsel of it, uh, seems more precious to you than ever. And there Ifan is also included. You look around at those who have accompanied you so far. In each one, Something unique shines through. Our team, we've come so far. Divinity has eluded you so far, but life, life beats strong within you, here and now. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void mm. is growing stronger, and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Perhaps they feel it too. Aww. And hey, the interesting thing is, we could actually spend some private time with all of the companions. I mean, of course, we're going to spend our time with Ifan. But I mean, I just saved. So how about we look into all the Roman scenes? I never did that. I just know Ifan's and Losis. So, um... I think that would be interesting. 
let's just whore around a little bit, <laughs> I guess. So we're just going to do all of them, I'd say, and we're going to finish with the fun, so that's our canon one. You know, Beast, I've been thinking about you and your beard a lot. Well, I think about you a lot too, lad. I mean, I kind of have to and all, given the circumstances. I, I'm not sure what my beard has to do. The best nickname you can come up with is lad. And, I mean, Lavender is not completely subtle, but also not that direct as the first option. Lemina moves in and caresses be Beast's beard. Perhaps he get the hint. Oh. Oh? Hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. I, uh, well, I mean, just look at you. I'd be a fool to turn you down. Beast fiddles with his beard, but otherwise seems glued to the spot. Oh, he's so awkward. <laughs> Lavender grabs his hand with confidence and leads the way. As you move to go below decks, the live wood creaks and groans. The steps you thought you knew lead you to a part of the ship you've never seen before. A newly carved nook that smells of resin and wood chips. Touching the wall beneath your fingers, the live wood hums at your touch. You understand that the Lady Vengeance has carved this space for you in gratitude for your help. I wonder if you couldn't romance anyone if you didn't free the Lady Vengeance, or promise to free them. You enter, and feel the presence of the ship recede, offering you the total privacy of a moment alone with your companion. Oh. The first moment you have been truly alone together. Well, I'll have to do. I always preferred a starlit beach myself. You probably figured old beast here to be, well, a beast about this but i've not had much time for tenderness these last few years he's cuter than i thought but i think it's just the awkwardness he twists his whiskers into knots as he speaks making a tangled mess of his glorious beard hmm. you know i see you all of you you're safe with me i i believe you Beast looks at you gratefully and closes his eyes. He basks in the silence for a moment, then breathes a contented sigh. I ain't said this to anyone in my life. Not since I set foot on the Wave Dancer, anyway. But you should call me Marcus. It is my name, after all. Oh. Anyway, here I am, yammering like a newborn otter pup. As prone as I am to talk in a... Don't always have much interesting to say. And there we have a steam. And I mean, I mean, he had some interesting stories, right? And Lavender shakes his head and tells him, you know, I could never tire of your stories. A sweet thing to say, but I know the truth. It's just. Just, just that I didn't always feel anyone was ever listening. When you're a bastard kid growing up with a prim and proper princess, you're ballast. Only thing that ever mm. kept Queen Laura from dumping me was Justinia herself. That was before the change, of course. Mm. Well, they weren't really close. But you know most of this already. I, I just get all jumpy around you sometimes. Like if I don't keep my lips busy with talking, they'll get busy with kissing and living the wings you know that doesn't sound like it's such a bad thing he nods and smiles silently then thrusts his lips against yours suddenly you were at sea lost in that sumptuous beard and rocking to the rhythm of the waves you pull out of the kiss and the vision yet beast pulls you back your entire being is whiskers and heat he explores you with his hands, inciting a series of shakes and shudders. I don't know what I expected when I set out for Reaper's Coast. He leans forward for another peck. But it wasn't this. No. Eleven smiles. You know, I am good at surprises. 
That you are. That you are. Never did see you coming, but really, ain't that the wonder of it? I'm prepared for most anything. The undertow dragging me off, or the royals catching up, or releasing my people from their misery. This here. This is special precisely because I didn't see it coming. Wonder of the unknown and unexpected. He nuzzles even closer. And Lavender starts shedding his clothes. Hold up. Before you get too far along, there's something I always wanted to try. Oh. Beast leaps to his feet and begins to gyrate his hips. He runs his hands up and down his chest and buttocks, blowing you a kiss with each garment he jettisons. When the dance ends, a nude and winking dwarf stands before you. <laughs> Did he just do an unclothing lap dance? Okay. So, how'd I do? That's one way to get ready. Lemon offends himself. You know, you're hotter naked than you're clothed. Oh. Well. Beast looks unsure once again, his innate confidence melting as he takes in the sight of you. I'm a lucky man, Ham. He returns to your arms and begins to peel away your clothing until you feel only skin against skin. Save his beard, of course, which tickles your face, your chest, your belly, as his kisses slowly move downward. It's so much about this beard. Lemida calls his name. And there is only pleasure. All that was, is, and will be fades to fog. What remains are two figures entwined as one. Here, because it's not Bosque free, we fade to black. No. Gotta say, cuter than I expected. So, let's do another romance. Gonna romance them all. I mean, we do have the option, why not see all those scenes? Come here. After all that's just happened, you look around. Divinity has eluded. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void is growing stronger, and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Oh Perhaps they feel it too. Levin looks to Fain and asks, You know, I was wondering if you wanted to go below the decks. You know, I'd like to get to know you. Know me? I believe we know each other rather well at this point. <laughs> Of course, Fane doesn't get a hint. Indeed. I have made many notes on the major events in your life, and I believe personally observed many more. In fact... Fane stops as he sees the look in your eyes, somewhere between annoyance, amusement, and affection. <laughs> oh. To know me. Scripturally. I... I mean, I rather wish, um... Hmm? Yes. Yes, I think I would like that very much. As you move to go below decks, the live wood creaks and groans. The steps you thought you knew, touching the wall, you enter. The air between you cracks and shimmers with source. Despite everything that's happened, you allow yourself to enjoy a moment of peace. I gotta say, I really do wonder how it's like to... Well, literally make out with a skeleton. And more. So... Um... What exactly did you have in mind? Lavender smiles softly and reaches out to touch Fane's face. Fane pulls back as you reach for him. He looks away, his shoulders slumped. Oh. Please, it is all well and good to caress cold bone, but it just feels so empty. Which is interesting. I think the first time he talks about how he feels about being... Well, still an eternal, but quite the skeleton. Don't misunderstand. I enjoy your company. I enjoy it very much. It's just... I feel 
Nothing. Neither the strength of your hand nor the warmth of your touch. Oh. So very sad. Yeah, romancing a skeleton, who would have thought? So, sorry, I had to read. So, is there anything you would like to do? I... I think there might be a way. A way we could be intimate. But it requires absolute trust. Is the face-shaping mask involved? In truth, I never dreamed I would have the opportunity amongst your kind. But, well, perhaps I was wrong. You sound so fragile and emotional. That's... that's cute. <laughs> You've helped me more than you know. You've opened my eyes to the merits of this world, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> this land is so much more than a wasteland to explore. It's people more than specimens to be studied. My life is more than my obsession. At least, with you it could be. Aww. This notion of mine is not without risk, but do you trust me? Lavender smiles. After everything we've been through, I trust you with my life. And I think even though this whole Roman scene is like, hypothetical, after the whole Ascension thing and everything went through, it's the truth for Lavender. And I trust you with more than my life. Fane reaches out his hand. And Lavender takes his hand and is very curious to see where this leads. Fane bows his head and saw starts to swirl around his bones. Is he creating a body? It outlines him in a green glow, shimmering about him as if his spirit was stepping out of his body. Take me. Just a bit. Just enough. Oh lord. Last option. He's exposed. Consume his souls. Take it all. Yikes. Lemonet sucks a tiny amount of his souls. It's tough, but he keeps control. Your vision starts to blur as his source trickles into your body. And that's why it's a lot about trust. But basically, melding our source. Absolutely vulnerable, absolutely intimate. Which kind of reminds me a little bit of Gay's Roman scene in The Weave. This will work much better if you close your eyes. Please. You close your eyes and the world around you disappears, but a new one takes its place. You're surrounded by rows of angular stone shelves, each one packed full of books. You're standing in the academy, but where you saw a cold, broken ruin, this place feels warm and welcoming. It feels like home. That sounds really cool. I wouldn't have expected the Roman scene of Fane to be that cool. And Lavender looks around in amazement. As you take in the bizarre architecture all around you, standing a little way off, you see Fane. Not a skeleton, not a mask, not some shadowy figure. You see Fane. He's leaning against a desk, a four-headed staff in his hand. His bluish-gray skin shimmers in the gentle light of the library. Which is interesting. I think this is the first time we actually get told how Eternals truly look like. And knowing that it's bluish-gray skin, that looks a lot like the Void Woken, right? He walks over to you with slow, smooth steps, his staff clicking sharply against the stone. As he gets closer, you can see his eyes, which look black from a distance, are actually filled with tiny points of light. It's like gazing into the cosmos. So, where were we? Mm -hmm. And Lemon reaches out to touch Fane's face. He looks incredible. His skin feels smooth, like well-loved leather. It creases into a smile as he gently leans into your palm. I must admit, my research never covered ways to entertain cherished colleagues as they're pulled into interactive memories of your past. <laughs> Hmm. 
and Lavender drapes his, his arms over Fane's shoulders. I do have some ideas. He leans in with a smile, his lips meeting yours. He steps forward, taking you in his arms. Your hands run down his chest, across silken robes. He smiles shyly as you break off the kiss, but you notice a look in his eyes. Perhaps you would prefer something else? I could find a mask if you would feel more comfortable looking at one of your own kind. Oh, That's actually a really sad statement. I think he has to be someone else, right? What do you want? Fane hoists you up in the air, walking back to his desk. He lands heavily against the desk, sending immaculate piles of paper flying across the floor. He pulls you on top of him with a grin. His heart races where your hands press down on his chest, and you can feel him growing, not just where you'd expect, but everywhere. Well... His body seems to move and change to your pleasure, but all you can see are his eyes. A kaleidoscope of darkness and light, like the universe staring up at you. They draw you in, and as you press down on his body, you can feel yourself twisting, falling into those eyes, falling into infinity. That was a really cool scene. Incredible. And also the mask scene reminds me of the Emperor's Roman scene when he can turn back into his guardian form. True. Kind of similar. similar. Alright. I'd say if we couldn't Romans our Ifan, that would be still a nice alternative. And I really didn't expect that. After all that's just happened, life, every flawed morsel of it, seems yes, you look yes. divinity. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void is growing so. stronger, and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Perhaps they feel it too. Let's go for the woman in our team. Mm, Losa, would you maybe care to join me? I have to admit I was hoping for a moment we might spend alone, together. Alone? Together? You and me? Mm hmm? I love that. Lead the way, Chief. No. Oh. As you move to go below decks, the live touching you end. Would you get a load of this place? She saunters around the room, inspecting it like she plans to move in. She tosses her head over her shoulder and calls out to you in an affected tone. I suppose it will do, darling. Darling kind of gives me Miss Squibbles the Peak vibes. And then a response in the same tone. Oh, how we do suffer. Her face cracks into a smile, then a laugh. <laughs> so, what should we do? Wait, don't answer that. This is also really cool romance. She digs into her pack, skipping over to you, and sits on the ground at your feet, then tugs your hand for you to sit on the ground too. Now I have to say so far, all the romance scenes had something. They're cool. Of course, whole different level than BG3 ones, but still really nice. She sets an empty bottle on the ground between you and looks at you impishly. Are we playing spin the bottle with two players? Let's play a game. <laughs> of course, the most loser way to do that. Eleven the grins. Hmm. So what game did you have in mind? It's called Spout's Choice. We each take a turn spinning this here bottle, and whoever the spout points to, well, I'll explain that part when we get there. I guess I know how the chances are going to play out. You can go first. She takes your hand and places it on the bottle, on its side between you. Go on, spin. Lavender spins it. The important decisions counterclockwise. The bottle swishes in circles as it spins. Losa watches it intently as it lands pointing directly at yourself. Okay. <laughs> ha! Try again. <laughs> it's so unnecessary, I love it. 
And Lavender spins it clockwise. The bottle swishes in circles as it spins. Losa watches it intently as it lands, pointing directly at her. She smiles and blushes. I mean, it is your game. Why are you blushing? Well, in this game, you're meant to plant one on whoever the bottle lands on. She flutters her eyelashes in exaggerated coquettishness, her blush deepening. Lavender leans forwards and kisses her red cheeks, then her parted lips. She kisses you back, gently, more gently than you expected, then leans away, flushed with colour. My. <clears throat> My turn. <laughs> she spins the bottle, and it twirls and it's twirls, so low, sir. and comes to a rest, pointing into a no-man's land to the left of your knee. She doesn't lift her eyes from the bottle, but quickly corrects it to face you. She looks up then, drawing an arc with her eyes from the bottle's tip to your gaze. Her dark eyes are deeper, lusher than ever before. Hey, Chief. Well, come around often. She crawls across the space between you and climbs into your lap, wrapping her legs around you. Lemona leans in to kiss her. She holds her head back, but inches her body closer to yours. She is warm against you, warmer than she should be, her way to comforting anchor in this foreign place. Wait, just a little bit. Look, I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. I don't know if we'll find Dallas. I don't know which one of us is going to, you know, all the stuff they say we'll do. I don't even know if I'm still going to be myself much longer. Mm -hmm. But I do know that I'm happier now than I've ever been in my life. You make me feel like... Like I have a voice. Like I'm not just a host. Like I'm a real person. Mm. I need to tell you something. Sure. Go ahead. The thing is, I... Well, you know, when two people get to know each other pretty well... <laughs> it's just, I... Go on. I... I love you. Oh, The only one so far who tells that, right? Lemon's heart nearly explodes. I love you too. Suddenly you feel the thud 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 of her heart hammering against her chest and into yours. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. Aww. One tear streams out of the corner of her eye as she breaks into a fit of laughter and throws herself forward, knocking you to the ground, her whole body wrapped around yours. Oh, I've wanted you for so long. I've wanted you like this for so long. Lemina puts her hand on her face and looks at her, her hungry eyes, the flush of her cheeks, her wet lips. She grins and takes your chin softly in her hand, parting your lips. She comes close to your mouth, so close, then licks your lips, once, twice, and kisses you softly, soft as your first time, then harder, deeper, her tongue swirling around yours. Lavender presses himself against her mouth, chest, hips, moving to a secret rhythm only we two share. She tugs at your clothes and growls in your ear. Get these off. Oh, that changed quite quickly. And Lavender begins peeling off everything on his body. She nips and kisses newly exposed flesh all over your body, running her mouth from your neck to your belly button, down to your shins, up to your thighs. Oh, that is one beautiful man. <laughs> she sits up on her knees, still straddling your hips, and shimmies out of every last article of clothing. Her body is smooth and soft, flesh dipping generously beneath your hands. You could take handful after handful of her and never have enough. Here I am, all of me, and I want all of you. And I want to give you all of me. 
She moves her body slowly, slowly, slowly over yours, until you are one person, the surprise of it, the perfection of it making you both gasp. She moves in small circles, your bodies joined like they were made for each other, like they were never meant to be apart. Oh, you're perfect. You're perfect. Seems kind of more detailed than the other ones, right? Levin reaches up and feels her with his hands, her soft skin, the beautiful curves of her body. She covers your hands with hers, guides them to places that make her exhale sharply, her eyelids fluttering. Definitely seems more explicit. Or maybe it just seems like that because she's a woman. I don't know. She keeps a gentle pace, then begins moving faster, harder, sweat glistening on her collarbone. Like this? Evan's blood is rising in his veins, shivering, tensing. Yes, like this. She keeps the pace, her eyes locked with yours, a half-drugged smile on her lips. This is it. This is my cure. You're my cure. You are one in the night, one great beautiful being, your bodies aching with desire where they touch, your mind ablaze, your souls entwined, growing great, greater, greater, greater. How could I have gone this long without you? In this infinite moment, it feels you'll never be apart again. Wow. What the scene. Alright, so let's just go for Sibyl, and then we can finally do the true run of Eva. Here we go again. Still romancing. After all that's just happened, you look up divinity. Who knows what lies ahead Sibyl. for your- She pulls you close and kisses you like you've never been kissed before. That's a yes. Come, let's find ourselves a quiet spot, shall we? I mean, Sybil really tried, right? As you move to go below decks, touch you enter. No sooner have you entered the room than Sibyl shoves you onto the bed and starts tearing at your clothes. That's what I expected. I want you naked. Now. And Lavender doesn't need to be told twice and undresses. She looks on as you remove your garb, and it's like you can feel her gaze, an eager flame that travels up and down your naked body. Hmm. Good boy. Oh boy. She takes one of your hands and leads it to her lips, gently brushing them with your fingertips. Remember how when we first met I licked your arm? Think now of what will happen when I lick you all over. Or the things she will know about us. All those memories shrouded in flesh. No more secrets. I will know you like I know my own heart. She lowers your hand and places it between her breasts. You can feel the beat of her heart, the dulcet ancient rhythm. Let me come to know you. Yes, you may know me. She kisses you gently. Then, as your mouths open, a dalliance of tongues. Mmm. The sweet taste of remembrance. The titillation that is one's first kiss. How young you were. Tell me, how was it? Oh boy. Reli kind of reliving all those memories through her. And I mean, we're an elf too. We know that about her now. Lavender tells her the truth. It was a bumbling attempt at best. <laughs> so I gather, but practice makes perfect, as we've just proven. I think it's time for another taste. She kisses your neck, your chest, twirls her tongue around your nipples. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Another sensation altogether. It definitely feels like the female Roman scenes are more sexual, <laughs> more explicit, definitely. But... You're... afraid. Tell me why.
We are in the land of the dead. The whole world is in peril. Of course I'm a bit afraid. But you shouldn't be. Not with me by your side. Alas, it's me you fear. My nails and my needle. Hmm. Forget the scar. Forget the names on my skin. And forget the instrument with which I kill. You will get to know the real me. All of me. I am Sabeel, and I'm here with you. Oh. Levina repeats her word. Her words. You're Sabeel, and you're here with me. That's right, my darling. I'm here with you. Now do you realize you've no reason to fear me? That I could never hurt you? That really changed from the beginning. <laughs> I love you. Oh. Why did just the woman tell you that they love you? I want you. Her kisses go lower still, your belly and below. Her tongue is all along your length. Just a tease. Slowly she moves back up, her body close to you, her lips against your ear. Just one question left. The one question as yet unanswered in your flesh. Do you love me too? I do. I do love you. Not so evasive now, are we? Good. With a few easy movements, Sibyl slips out of her clothes and straddles you in all her naked glory. Two heats hot against one another. Ah, oh, isn't it wonderful to be in love? Mm. Especially in such trying times. Isn't it magical to make love? Her lips land on yours once more as she guides you inside her, and slowly, ever so slowly, gallops you into oblivion. Also a very nice scene. And still with the wings. So yeah, last but not least, Eva. <sighs> My favorite romance. No. After all that's just you look a divinity. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companion? Ifan raises an eyebrow, and his sharp teeth glint in a wide smile. Rest. Hmm. With you? Yes. Let's go. As you move to go below decks, touching you. So, uh, here we are. I just love this voice. Lavender doesn't want to waste any time. He steps closer to Ifan. Ifan raises an eyebrow. He looks at you long and slow. The shadow of a smile tugs at the edges of his wine-dark lips. As you step closer, your nose is filled with Ifan's intoxicating animal scent. He reaches out and catches your wrist in one rough hand. As his warm skin brushes yours, sauce sparks between you. Ifan smiles and moves even closer, Nuzzling at your neck with his nose. His beard tickles your reddening throat. Aside from your voice, the only sound is the whisper of fabric between your bodies. Dear one. Hmm. Ifan's hands reach for your own. His magnetic eyes seek yours. You know this man. He is ruthless, capable of anything. These hands that hold your own have tortured, maimed, killed. That is a little less romantic. But still... Lavender wants those hands all over himself. He pulls you close to him, his hard, lean body pressing against you. He leans in to kiss you. It is not a gentle kiss. It's primal, wild even. Your lips bruise and your tongue tastes the metallic tang of blood. You. Everything is so dark, so grey. But you, you're bright. Aww. When you shine your light on me, Everything else is bearable. Aww. Ifan leans back to take in the sight of you. His dark eyes travel over every inch. He reaches out and traces the bow of your lips with his fingers. I know I shouldn't stare, but I... I just... can't stop. I wish you could see yourself as I see you now. Mm. You're incredible. Letterer. 
And Lemina leans in to him and places his hand on Ethan's chest, kisses him tenderly. He responds in kind, then pulls you down to lie on the ground beside him. Not on the bat, on the ground? Ifan growls and presses close to you, so you can feel how very much he wants this. His hot breath warms your face. He grasps your ribcage with strong, warm hands. You feel yourself lifted from the very earth into some other realm. Ifan's fierce, dark pupils fill your vision. I crave you. What? Every step of the way I've wanted you. Since the moment we met. I've tried to conceal it, but... I can hardly breathe around you. Imagine how lovely awkward he was once we left for joy and we ask him if he ever gets like lonely. I've dreamed of this moment so often. You can't even imagine. My thoughts are always, always consumed by you. Your smile, your spirit, your soul. Ifan undresses you slowly, removing every last stitch of clothing from your body. The warmth of his own body ensures you feel no cold, and the warmth of his gaze ensures you feel no embarrassment. Lavender eagerly addresses him in return. Pulling his tunic over his head, you reveal Ifan's muscular body, all scars and sinew. He grins eager, pointed teeth parting, and embraces you, so you are completely enveloped within his strong arms. In the low lamplight, the wider world fades away. Sweat glistens where your bodies meet. There is nothing but wonder, eyes, hands, and tongues. That. Ifan's feral eyes glitter ravenously as he looks deep into your own. He moves into you and kisses you again. He tastes of earth, dark earth, and night. Fire runs through your veins, licking at every nerve in your body. Every movement from him sparks a charge, like chain lightning in a storm. Lavender's heart, Lavender's heart beats the tempo of the dance his body needs. There is nothing, nothing at all but you and him locked together. The fire inside you shivers and blazes, filling you with light and life, obliterating all the darkness within you. Ifan cries out. Nice. I take back everything I said about the female scenes being more passionate. You. You are everything. This one is as well. And in that one moment, you feel it. Nice. Ethan's just awesome. Some love in the dead holes of echoes. Unfortunately, even those things end sometime. Ifan shoots you a fond smile, warm and sleepy. That... I needed that. Well, I hope we get to do that again. Glad to hear it. He embraces you I hope you too. Squeezing you tight before pulling away with a rueful grin. Right. Let's get back to the ship. But still, no way I love you.